I had a lot of approaches for documentaries and movies, but the people who approached me, I was never interested in to do anything. When Peter Morgan asked me two and a half years ago, would you help me to write the script about the 76 season? Because this was all he was, he wanted to know. I said yes, because I knew that he knows what he's doing. And then uh, after a while, then Ron Howard joined the group, which is an, a known quantity in Hollywood. And then the whole thing was moving. So from my point of view, I told them everything I knew. Then the movie was done. And I'd never seen any details in between because Peter said to me clearly, you can tell me whatever you want, but I write the script. And it is very accurate. I have to say he did a very good job reproducing the 76 season. It must have been quite a surreal experience <coughs> watching a slice of your life on the big screen in a movie directed by Ron Howard. Can you let us in on some of your thoughts that were going through your mind as, as you watched the film for the first time? First of all, I was surprised that Rush is happening, or like, like you just uh, said. Well, but when I saw it the first time, I was impressed that, that there was no Hollywood changes or, or, or things changed a little bit uh, Hollywood-like. It is very accurate. So it is exactly, and this really surprised me very positively, and uh, the way Daniel Brühl played me was outstanding because I got him to know in Vienna when he said, uh, I'm going to play you. And I said, what is going to be your problem? He said, you're alive and you're in television all the time. So people know how you speak your Austrian language. For German to be Austrian is tough and your English way of talking. So he did a very good job because I spent a lot of time with him, which he asked me to do. And when I saw him the first time, I was impressed. And how about Chris Hemsworth as James Hunt? What did you the same make of thing? Take? The same thing. When he had his first uh, say in the movie, this James's voice I could even hear, and I think he did a he did a very good job. And although in the seventies safety was improving, wasn't it? But it was still quite a risky prospect um, getting on the racetrack. What impact did that have on your approach for the sport and living your life off the track as well, knowing that you might not always be around? Um, we knew that uh, it was obvious every year one or two got killed. So I was the spokesman for the drivers to improve safety, but it was a big job I had to do and you could never catch up quick enough so you stop this killing problem there and were getting killed there. So it was difficult at the time and um, we had to, to fight. But thank God nowadays it's safe and good because many years gone by and the FIA took over the safety issues. You must feel pretty lucky yourself to have survived that era, really. Yes, I was. Um, what memories do you have of getting yourself prepared to get, a back, get back on the track um, just six weeks after that, the crash that we see in the film rush? And this was the biggest problem because I asked myself, do you want to go back after a crash like this? I said, yes, certainly, because I knew what I was doing. I knew the danger. And then I prepared for Monza, uh, but it was tough because... Friday I could not drive, I could not overcome the fear because the accident came back on me. Then I went to the hotel, then I came back on Saturday, uh, getting in the car, more relaxed, let them take the pressure away from me. And then uh, things started to work out again. And then in the end, um, I think half a year later, I drove exactly like before, but it took quite a while. And how brave um, now, looking back with hindsight, do you think you were in, in pulling out of the Japanese Grand Prix in 76? You know, and in some ways a, a braver move than some people make on the, the racetrack. No, it was, a difficult, it was not a difficult decision for me because the circuit was flooded. There was so much rain that nobody could drive. For two hours, nothing is happening. And then the race director came, the little Japanese guy, and said, now we're going to start the race because it's television time and at six it's dark. And then I said, look, the circuit is flooded like before. Why the hell do you want to send us out? This is the way it is. Mr. Ecclestone had some inputs and off we go. And this for me at the time was completely stupid. Therefore, I think four other guys with me did not race because of this stupid decision. Uh, James did and won a championship. No problem. What are some of the biggest differences, would you say, between F1 today and how it was as we see it in the film in the 70s? Uh, a lot of difference because the 70s were different. Uh, the danger today, nobody has to think about it, thank God. Uh, to drive the cars on the limit and win races is the same difficulty. But all around, it's much easier to achieve because you don't need to worry about your life. Uh, it's more a family sport today because you can bring your children and your dog to the racetrack. 
So it is different, but I like it. I'm in charge now of the Mercedes team, if you know. Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg is doing a very good job this year. So I'm happy. And just finally, what do you think James Hunt would have made the film if he were allowed to sort of see it tonight at the premiere? This is for me the sad moment uh, because it brings a lot of memories back of James. I wish that he could be here today. And after the movie, we can have a good piece up. Nikki Lauda, thanks very much.